What's up, you guys? So, I'm early oops. Kind of oops. Anyways, so, uh, if you're new here, I'm Erica. This is Artist Till Death. Dun, dun, dun. And I do artwork. We do artwork every day. Jeff's taking a nap, so I'm kind of trying to keep it down a little bit. He's been working really hard all day. Anyways. Hey, y'all. Today, I have to do a sample piece for a client that wants something dark so that they can see if the water or drinks are spilled on the bar. It's for Artco in Deep Ellum. And I'm not really sure what direction I'm going to take this because when we first went up there, it was dark, maybe tie in the red that's everywhere. And then it be kind of a statement piece. And then he was like, also just defer to my wife, smart. Um, and she said, neutral, sleek and elegant. So I have no idea how to combine both of those design thoughts. So, <laughs> I have no idea. I've been looking over, trying to get inspiration and I have no idea. I have no idea. So I'm, I know he likes the gunmetal look. I went ahead and painted the base, um, this color. It's a little bit brighter on camera. It looks more like this area, the shadowy parts of this color. It's darker in person is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's called Abergeen DA230. It's from AAAspraypaint.com. We get it at a head shop that's in Dallas. And so I went ahead and based it in this color. I don't know if it's going to show through or not, but I'm going to try to create a something that'll um, make both of them happy. I don't know if that's possible with both of those specific looks that they have being exactly opposite. So I'm just going to start simple, I think, and then take it from there. I sent them a whole bunch of samples of things I've done before. Mm -mm, I have no idea. So we're just going to start with a gunmetal look and see if they want to incorporate anything on top of that because I already know that he likes the gunmetal look. I, I know that that is not neutral so I'm going to assume that they, the husband and wife that own this bar had a sidebar in the background and we're like, hey, what can we do to compromise? And gunmetal, I think, being the base is kind of what they came up with, but we'll see. Anyways, enough about the business aspect of doing countertops is like. Let's talk about color. This is Carbon Black by Just Resin. Uh, it's paste, so it mixes in super smooth, very easy, and it doesn't leave those little dimples of color or freckles or striations or starburst things. However you call it, it doesn't do that. I carry this color at artistaldeath.com, which you can find right there. Okay, so I don't want to do it just a solid gunmetal because... I mean, not that it's boring, but it's kind of boring. So I'm trying to kind of vary it a little bit. Um, so I mixed a gunmetal. I'm going to mix some of this black base paste by Color Passion, if I have any in here, into another cup of Carbon Black by Just Resin. I also carry this in our shop, artistilldeath.com, two T's, two L's. Where, are, what are the colors in their shop? Um, so 
it's an art gallery slash music venue slash nightclub in Dallas. And it's very awesome. But the general decor is like industrial. It's very industrial. And so I was very much into the idea of making it a statement piece because it's kind of a for artist by artist type of establishment. And um, their accent wall is red. The beams on the ceiling are red. I think the wood on the front of the bar is red. Everything in there is like cement or red bright red like are you sure you want to go with that color red um but it looks good in there and i have no idea how i'm gonna tie in sleek neutral and statement piece dark that goes with red I, mm. but we're gonna figure it out because that's what we do right um, you hear that too? I have an echo. Weird. Sometimes I have an echo and sometimes I don't. Is it better now? This color that I'm mixing up, I probably put too much Milky Way in there, but it's Milky Way. Okay. Is it better now? So their current bar top has veins of red and they are very much not wanting veins of red because right now it looks like their bar top is bleeding. That's their words. Is the audio better now? Same, but not that bad. I promise y'all one day I'll figure this system out. There's nothing different from yesterday. Nothing at all. Okay. This is, give me a one if this is better. One if it is better. One if it is better. Okay, two if this is better. I am not on two mics. So when you're answering me if it's better, I need to know what number you're answering. Just to make sure there's no delay. So, JJ just said worse, and Claire said nope. I need to know if that's worse and nope for number two. Too little? I don't know what that means. Okay, so this is mic three. Let me know if mic three is better. This is my four. So far, three is the best one, but this is my four. Just let me know if this is better, because it's my four. This is my five. Is five better or worse? Three is reverb. Y'all, I'm so sorry about this. Five better or worse? If 
Pegasus. Now it's on default. So if default isn't better, then we're going back to three or four. So I have no idea. One, two, three, four. You think four? Y'all let me know. Four? This is four. Four, 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 four. Four, number three. This is three. Three, 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 three. Three or four. Do four? Sounds good. I'm going to leave it on four because why would I change it? And we'll see if it's better than we know. For those watching our replay, I'm sorry. So, back to the arts. I did spray, I sprayed this already with something, the Abergine, 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 Abigine, however you want to say, um, this plum color, I sprayed it from AAAspraypaint.com, I got it from a head shop, not .com, not the website. So I'm going to start with the this, which is the carbon black. That's going to be my main color because that's the gunmetal color. Also, this is on an actual canvas, so I can't just put those cups in the center. It's making my everything bow up. So, there. Okay. So, all of the colors I'm using are basically opaque. What's up, you guys? I know I'm very excited about the summer tour. Don't forget that we are doing a class here in Dallas, beginning of August, if that's more convenient. Tammy Anderson will be at that one. So adding a black base to a gunmetal is the best way I found to get a true black shimmery color. If you buy a black mica, just know that what you're going to get is actually going to be not black. It'll be gunmetal. So if you run into that and that's an issue, just drop in a little bit of black paste or dye to deepen the color of it. I know it looks real sketch right now, but it'll be awesome. So I'm just going to put some bits of just the Milky Way through here just to get, sorry about that, some breakaway peekaboos of the Abergine, 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 however you say it, just so you can see some of it through there. And now I'm basically going to crosshatch, blend all these colors together. Maybe I won't do that where the Milky Way is because that's just going to cover up those areas. I think I'm probably going to have to mix more of the carbon black. I don't want any of the other colors to take over. I just want those to be kind of... Oh, there's also this color. Now I mean, jelly beans. Just tapping on through. I am going to attempt an Italian drip on this. You guys don't make fun of my Italian drip face. If you laugh at me, I'm just going to pretend you're laughing at Jeff's burn face. Jerry, there is an echo, but this is the best 
of the options tonight. For some reason, my computer's decided today we're not doing easy vocals. Yeah, we're going to need more. Hmm. Of this. I know it doesn't look like much right now. However, it's going to be amazing. Even if I have to do the spray paint Italian drip. I think next time I go to Rhonda's, she and I should do a video on the Italian drip where. She helps me to figure out how to finally do it without looking like uh, me trying to do it. I just wiped off my surstick, so I'm not putting resin back in my this. Hello. No, it's not you. It's my system deciding that um, it's not going to work at the time I need it to. Can't go to Texas right now. Well, lucky for everybody, we will be on tour. Um, so if you know of anybody that has space that I can teach a class of between 10 to 15, let me around the know because we're in the market. I'm just going to lay down some of this gunmetal over some of the black areas. I mix this resin up thirty, forty five minutes ago and it's still super fluid. I'd hope that it would have cured up a bit by this point so that I could do the things. Just so you guys know, when you are working with pretty fresh resin, whatever design elements you put into it is probably going to melt away. So I don't have a chopping brush because I can't go through brushes like that. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna bag it. So I'm just tapping this bag into my resin. I'm using a bag because it's not gonna soak up any of my resin. And it's still going to leave me like that crinkled pattern so that it's random. I'm trying to turn it and twist it and do a little bit something different every time I put the bag down to ensure a random pattern. If I wasn't live, I would leave this alone for probably two hours. Come back and bag it again before I do this next step. Because when you have fresh resin and you're trying to do a design that has to do with where the particles are laying, this design that I'm trying to do largely depends on where the particles are laying because I want to keep that look, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see. See how it's just motion? There's a little bit of variance because we had the black. There's a little bit of sparkle because of the Milky Way. You can't really see the Ibergeen coming through from there, but if you're on top of it, you can see it peekabooing through some of these areas. I'm going to go ahead with the design, even though I know it's going to melt away. And the reason why it's going to melt away is because when resin's fresh, it's more fluid, it's thinner, it hasn't started to cure at all. And so when there's a metallic in it, like everything that I used, the particles that are in it, are going to slowly sink. 
And so I want to bag it like I just did in a few hours when it's thicker to bring those particles back up to the surface so that these patterns stay. You may end up with a little bit of a texture, but because it's a countertop, we're going to sand it down and do a flood coat anyway, so that won't really matter. Because you will be inducing, nope, reintroducing air into it because you're picking resin up and putting it down and doing a whole bunch of manipulative, mm, manipulating, we're just going to say manipulating stuff to it. Um, and also when you are going to do alcohol spritz like I'm about to do, you want to wait till that gummy mark. Rhonda uses the uh, analogies of sweet tea when you have, if you're in the south, when you make sweet tea, your tea is warm and you mix sugar in it and you can see the swirls of sugar, but as soon as you stop mixing, you can see the particles of sugar start to sink. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. We're at sweet tea stage. And I'm going to wait till it's at cold syrup or cold honey stage, which is you can always test it by your over drips or whatever's under your piece or if there's drips on the table. If you touch it and you can stretch it uh, at least an inch, then you're at a good place to do all of these techniques that are going to give us some texture. If you sandwich, you lose the metallics. No, because the metallics are throughout. If it was a floating metallic like the Montana that we like to do the gold and silver veins where I let some of the um, propellant soak into paper. If I were to do that, you wouldn't want to sand those areas because that is definitely just surface and you would sand off all that metallic. So I'm going to take a video of this in its current state just in case they like it as is. which is super difficult if anybody's ever tried to take a video of something, a piece that's darker, it's not fun. Now, I'm going to go further with this and do some spurts of alcohol. These effects, too, will go away because the resin is too fresh, too liquidy. Too fresh and so clean. Where's my alcohol? Yeah, black resin is super hard to photograph or film. So this has Milky Way in it. JK, it has abalone in it. Now, I don't know if you guys are even going to be able to see any of the awesome, but we'll find out together. So I'm going to have to come back in later and redo this. Part of the dance because it's going to essentially melt away. You can't really even see that much of it anyways. So let's do a color on half of it. You want color showing you. I guess since I did the purple
What color do you think I should spritz on here? So what I'm about to do is mix a color of mica into my abalone so you can see the floating colors on top of this. Oh, Susan, I have a rag next to me with 91% alcohol on it, so I definitely washed my hands off, at least where I'm going to be touching my phone. What's up, Sweet Pea? Julie, sh send me um, a photo or post it in the Facebook group and tag me so that I can see where you're at and see if I can assist. I like the brass idea, but I don't know if I have any brass. Oh, Susan, I'm going to have Um, that's what I was thinking. I don't know about rate waves with casting craft. Um, I've used casting craft before. I haven't used it with um, Marcy's frozen. What heat source did you use? Yeah, I know there's an echo. My bad. So I'm gonna mix some red plum into my abalone. I would go with blood red, but that is one of the few notes that they gave me that they do not want. Can two micros be used at once? They can. So I mix some red plum into my this. That may be even too red. We'll just do it on half. My goodness. Why this just stop working? I'm just going to do this and let pieces just rip out. So now we've got areas that have a little bit of that plum color and it's dispersing those mica particles. You can see all these little circles. Now since the resin is fresh, these circles are going to end up uh, dissipating as the resin evaporates. Nope, as the alcohol evaporates. But you can kind of see those. So I guess maybe I'll do. Hello, hello, hello. Judy. Ugh. I'm trying.
But those are too small, so I can't do that. I have to do the whole deal. Maybe I shouldn't do the Italian drip. Maybe I should do the pickle claw. Would that work? I don't know. So now we have the alcohol drips that has the dispersion with no color in it. So it gives that like moon cratery look, which they probably would like. So what's happening is the alcohol is pushing the particles that are floating in the resin because it's a metallic. And since when you drop alcohol on resin, it goes outward, it's going to take those particles with it. And so it's going to leave those dark outlines. However, because the resin is so fluid, those particles will go out, but they'll end up sinking. So I will have to wait and bag it again and then spritz the alcohol on it again in a couple of hours. A couple of hours. Anyways, so that is where we're at with that. This side has the plum spritz on it. This side is just regular alcohol. And I thought I had mixed up too much resin, so I did another little board. I guess we can just see what we want to do with this one, maybe we'll do like an aqua spritz on it just to make it a fun one. This resin's been sitting in the cup. And as you guys know, you really want to get your resin out of your mixing cups as soon as possible and out onto a surface so that it doesn't continue to heat up while you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. But since this has been setting up, it may be thicker. And so the designs that we spritz into it or chop into it may stay just because. And because I have a limited amount of resin left, I am picking up my drips and applying them onto this. If this was an actual countertop, I would not recommend because you never know what kind of little particles you could pick up. You know what I mean? Jelly beans. So I'm using every drop of resin out of my everything. Um, is that it? We'll make it, we'll make it work. Oh yeah, this is thicker. Frugal. Waste not, want not is a motto I've always live by. I mean, why waste it? It's perfectly good, right? Ugh. All right. So we should be able to make this amount of resin work on here. Maybe on the thinner side, but it'd be fine. My sister would be so proud. If you guys don't know, my sister is um, a budgetarian or a frugal fanatic. She lives by Dave Ramsey's rules of saving money. And she has a YouTube channel if you want to learn how to save a whole bunch of money and to budget. She's a lot like me. She's one of my favorite people. What's up, Philip West? How are you doing? How are you been? Yeah, so this is super thin amount of resin. Thin amount? Is that? That's probably not words. However, 
We're still going to make it work. All right. So now that we have everything covered, let's get the bag out. This little one will work. Keeping it random, keeping it random. What I'm doing right now is putting the particle, since it's a shimmer, into a pattern that isn't this swipey pattern, which you can totally do. You can keep that if that's what you're going for. I think I may even do a sample piece with just that hand swipe look. Never know. Never know what's going to hit a buyer's eye and then be like, ah, that right there is exactly what I had in mind and could not verbalize. Because essentially as artists, when you get commissions, unless they are very detailed or A-type, you're not going to really know what they have in their head until you do it. So see all this little texture because of the bubbles? That's because we just introduced a whole bunch of air by chopping it like we did. So I'm going to send a video of just this to client because What's up, Donna Parker? I hope you're having an amazing day. You see Bowie and the cats? That'd be a fun band. Da, 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 Bowie and the cats. Clara. So see how when I'm popping the bubbles, it kind of leaves like a pop mark behind for a minute. That's one way you can tell that your resin's starting to set up because as your resin gets thicker, when you have a bubble and you pop it, it's going to take a minute for that when you have a bubble, it's more than just surface. It's a full bubble a lot of times that goes into the resin. So when you pop the bubble, that crater that was there takes a little bit of time to fill in when you hit it with heat. So. You, of course, can send an email. So here we have just regular gunmetal. I did send a photo to client. Well, I took a photo and a video, but I'm 100% jealous you do all these things without getting resin all over your phone. I have an alcohol rag right here that I try to remember. Speaking of try to remember, I have shoes on in the studio. You still sleep. Anyways, so let's do, should I do a spray paint? drip we'll get them or just spritz it with aqua what do you guys think wrapping your phone in saran wrap is a very good idea 
Mm -mm -mm -mm. Bowie and the cats. So what do you guys think? Spray paint drip. Okay, so now I have to find a gloss spray paint. Um, okay. Okay, Bowie. Anybody use Valstar? Bowie. We're going to find out together. If this will work. spritz on this side and then just alcohol on this side but it's too fresh it's gonna melt away so I'm gonna have to do it again in a couple hours and now I'm going to take this gunmetal spray and spritz cool no Valspar we're gonna go to shop oh he says hi you pop up you want to fix the camera? It was fixed. Yesterday. I fixed it earlier. Take him away from the spray paint. So see how it's kind of blooming a little bit? I know it. How it's kind of like got that starburst outside. That is because the resin's too fresh. Everyone says hi, B. Hello. You should try it. Highly recommend. I didn't put it there. I stepped over it. So, this may be a little bit too colorful for clients, but it's going to end up still melding and moving a lot. Butterflies. What are we talking about here? Oh my goodness, it does look like the moon, doesn't it? Totally does. So, because the resin's so fresh, it's going to continue to bloom and move. And this would be a great look for someone's countertops. Too much color for this particular client if they're trying to stay neutral. But you never know. <laughs> Hi, mother of the groom. Embedding butterflies in your resin. What's up, Denise? Your, your butterflies, butterflies went clear. clear. I'm sorry, okay. Emma. So yeah, that's where we're at with this one. 
I will be posting a true color video. Bowie hairs, if anyone's interested. I'll be posting a true color video about this and that one soon. Anyways, I know, I'm sorry about the echo. I think it's just going to be part of my life now. Brand new mouse. I got resin on it already. Fixed Fix it. it. Crushed it. Anyways, what's up, Kim? Um, I will be showing the those, this and that. I'll post a video on ATV's Poor People and on YouTube. You guys can see what the finished piece looks like. Um, Goodness, I don't know what you guys are talking about with butterflies. However, I hope it still works out for you guys. And I know the color's bad, and I know the echo. I know. But sometimes you got to roll with it. Anyways, I hope you guys had an awesome day. I hope you have an awesome tomorrow. And we will see you tomorrow evening. What's today? Wednesday? We'll be here tomorrow night. And so, oh, the sound is perfect now. What camera is this? Webcam 930E. Okay. So on this screen, it's camera 234. Camera 4 is just like the other one. But I have less camera options. So, I mean, less mic options. So, I'll figure it out. I'll copy and paste this into, anyways, I'll figure it out. Hope you guys have an awesome day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Be kind to one another, because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember, we do the test. So, you don't have to. We'll see you guys in the Yana. Bye. I said bye. Billy ran in here and looked around like, are you taking it?